Well, thank you for the very kind introduction. I have a longer version of my life history available uh, at all good bookstores, if you're interested. Uh, but I am delighted to be here today at the second uh, Wales and South West Maternity and Midwifery Festival. I was just explaining, I think it's fascinating you've called the event a festival rather than a conference or a summit. Also, it suggests that you have to listen to lots of speeches, and here I am talking to you for some period of time. Uh, but I think there is a real point about celebrating the role that midwives play. Uh, lots of us wouldn't be here were it not for uh, midwives. And uh, there's something not just about the skill, about the technical skill uh, of uh, midwives, but it's actually the, the relationship and the compassion and the want to understand the wishes uh, of the mother and the family about what will matter to them. And I'll talk more about that. Uh, but I really do recognize that midwifery has a huge role to play within our health and social care system. And we continue to invest in the future of the profession here in Wales. For the fifth year running, I have approved an increase in the Welsh Government investment in health professional education. So it rose to £114 million, an increase of £7 million on the last year. So that is a record level of funding, and it means we're training more health and care professionals than ever before. And the previous year, I announced a significant increase in midwifery training of over 40% in places. And that came on the back of the reality that uh, we needed more midwives because we're having uh, a changing profile in women who are giving birth in Wales. So we listened to what was being said, uh, and we increased the training number. So we continue to invest in the future of the profession and not just encouraging some of you to keep on working for longer. Uh, but also in terms of valuing the future of the profession, we've made different choices in Wales to some parts, uh, well, for England, and also a different approach to Scotland as well. In Scotland, they have an, uh, a nurses' bursary. In Wales, we have an NHS bursary that includes midwives, as well as nurses and other healthcare professionals too. Your therapy professionals uh, would receive that too in their training. Uh, and we've kept that after it's been scrapped in England, and I've recently confirmed it's been rolled forward for another year because I recognise that taking away that bursary will mean that some people simply won't go into this profession and others without that support. And even then, it is sometimes difficult for people to make it through their whole course of study. And the encouraging part is that midwifery places are still highly competitive. There are lots of people who want to apply for every single midwifery place available. We want to support those people who have gone through a highly competitive process to complete their training and to be in a position to carry on working in a career that I hope that you love and value for yourselves, but I can certainly tell you it's certainly valued by the wider public. And I hope that really does send a clear message about the value and commitment that this government places on our workforce, including, of course, our midwives. But that also comes with the recognition that we have real and present challenges. Uh, so in June, I extended the, uh, uh, the marketing and recruitment campaign, Train, Work, Live. We started that with GPs and then nurses, and I've now extended it to cover the midwifery profession. So on Tuesday next week, I'll be at the Royal College of Midwives uh, Congress in Manchester uh, to help support the launch of that recruitment initiative, uh, and I think I'll have an opportunity to speak to Congress as well. So we're really serious about not just recruiting more midwives in the training route and wanted to keep those midwives here in Wales to have a, what I hope will be a really good career, but also to make wider efforts to recruit midwives into our services now. So I do recognise the unquestionably importance of midwifery services to the whole population. Uh, and to recognise that, we recently published the Maternity Services Vision. That's been developed to help guide and transform maternity services here in Wales. It demonstrates our commitment to a fresh and revitalised approach to ensuring that future generations really do receive the best possible start in life. And collaboration and partnership were at the heart of forming the vision. We were fortunate here in Wales to have many people contributing to and shaping that direction. It was a cross-professional and cross-organisational approach. And it's a really good example of what I want to see more of in A Healthier Wales. A Healthier Wales is the long-term plan for health and social care that I published last year in Wales. It's the first joint plan that we've had for health and social care. And it came not just from the government with me and advisors sitting down into a, into a dark room and deciding uh, what plan shall we give to the service. It came from the government working with the health service, with local government, with the third sector, and voices from housing too. So a genuinely joined up approach. 
and we want to take a joint-up approach and look at the, the vision for maternity services. So it's about local services learning from each other and sharing what they do so everyone across the country can benefit from that learning when things go right as well as things go wrong to try and make sure we continue to drive up the quality of the midwifery service. And so that five-year maternity vision has that approach about learning from different parts of the country embedded within it. And I do want to say thank you to everyone in this room who played their part in leading the way and helping to deliver that maternity vision. And in developing it, the starting point was to think where it should have been. What matters to women and families? What have they told us about our current services? And what sort of support do they want to see in the future? And in listening to the voices of women and their families, uh, we actually had over 4,000 women in Wales who took part in the Your Birth We Care survey. So 4,000 recent voices who have taken part in maternity services telling us what they thought of what they got and what they wanted to see in the future. And that's been really important for us to understand, to make sure that we listen and that then we hear what families say and that affects what we will do in the here and now and the future. The sort of experience that families want at a crucial point in the lifetime of families that changes and that should permeate throughout our service and should continue to shape our future direction. So the vision gives us that direction to ensure that we provide family-centred care regardless of the complexity of the need and to provide that equality and excellence in service across the country. And of course the other really important voices who helped to shape those future plans were professionals, people working in the service, people like you in the room today. So we listen to people who receive care, that part of taking part in care, and then the people who provide that care within the midwifery profession. And it's ensured that we do have practical, deliverable, achievable actions, and that putting people's needs front and center in doing so. So that five-year vision provides a holistic vision of the future of what women and their families can expect to receive. Uh, and I should say my excellent prepared notes that I broadly followed tell her at this point that as a father, I know how anxious families can be at this time. Um, actually, uh, my son is five. Uh, and I was in particular thinking about it before I'd looked at these remarks again today because he was awake at three in the morning. It took us a couple of hours to get him back to sleep. That's one of the challenges that you get told that children are different. He's normally a good sleeper. But, uh, and equally today, they've been told to bring in some photos. They're doing a project about growing up. So we had to go and look through photos of him when he was born, when he was one. So we wanted one of each year in his life. And it made us think about all the different stages that we've been through, from uh, the excitement and then a bit of anxiety and then reading lots of things about going to, to our um, maternity classes uh, antenatal classes and then the conversation with the midwife about what might happen and our options and each of those stages the community midwifery team made a really big difference to us because you know, my wife's a lawyer I used to be a lawyer I'm now a politician I was just being appointed as a deputy health minister but actually it didn't make any difference in the sense that this was the first time for us uh, and of course we were nervous of course we didn't understand everything but we had people there who helped us uh, and that made a really big difference. And then when Isaac arrived, uh, the midwife who stayed on at the end of her shift to make sure that Michelle was okay. And again, that isn't, um, if you like, the technical skill of being a midwife, but that was the human side of it. And it really did make a difference. That extra part of her time made a huge difference to us. And she came and saw us the next day as well. And the support we had in the first few days for the midwife about breastfeeding as well. And so it, all of those things made a really big difference and gave us more confidence and made us think that actually we're not the only people going through these particular challenges. We're not the only people who worry, am I doing the right thing? Uh, and I can honestly say that the service we had uh, was what I would want everyone to have on the National Health Service, to have that compassion, to have a committed professional who is also a human being and helping you through a time of anxiety as well as excitement. And it really has changed our lives and changed our lives for the better, despite the occasional interrupted sleep. And my private secretary is about to experience that joy as well. So he's getting ready to um, uh, not getting so much sleep and having even more tasks that he's told he needs to do as well. But that goes with the territory. Um, 
But for all of the excitement and the joy that we've experienced as a family, we know there are times where things go wrong. It isn't always the case that our service isn't reflective as we want it to be, with a generally supportive profession, with high quality leadership and people expecting the right service of each other, with women at front and centre in the way that we deliver care. And in Wales, the recent example, as many in the room will be aware, uh, in April, we had the publication of the Royal College's review that I commissioned into maternity service in the former Cumtaf University Health Board. And the report describes a number of serious concerns and a real call to action and the requirement to not simply look the other way, but a requirement to look, to listen and to improve. The report's highlighted failings in governance, in data accuracy, serious incident reporting, leadership and culture. And the review made clear that the impact that it had on pregnancy outcomes and experiences. And the accounts of women and families were really upsetting to read. They brought an insight into what uh, failings in care meant for them. Not just a technical outcome, but what it meant for them when they had to go home and the support that they felt that they didn't have and they shouldn't have had and the way that they felt that they were spoken to by some members of the profession. I should also make absolutely clear that uh, in reading that report, I was not just struck by the cultural comments about midwives, but I was incredibly disappointed as well in the behaviour of doctors. Um, the doctors in that service have a large uh, share of responsibility, and I've been very clear this is a system failure. It's not about going after midwives and saying, you are the people who let women down. Actually, the whole system went wrong, and there were people who did not step up to the responsibility that we are entitled to expect of them, and that actually at the start of their career and their training, they thought they were signing up to. So there is a need for real change, transformation, and improvement. It highlighted that the service had been under pressure for a considerable period of time, uh, and that actually there were staff shortages, so there was certainly a significant part of that. So it's been a really difficult time for maternity service staff within that health board. And I want to take an opportunity to thank staff for continuing to come to work and continue to recognise the pressure they're under, uh, but actually the need to think again and to be reflective about the service that they're providing as a whole team. I know that's been difficult, but we are now starting to see some improvement with more midwives who have accepted job offers in that part of Wales, so the staff numbers are starting to move in the right direction. Um, but that is difficult to continue to provide safe and effective care. So there's real thanks for me because the job that I have to do isn't always easy or straightforward, but it's in everyone's interest that I'm never that person who was dressed up in either primary care or in a hospital when people come in needing health and care. But people who do that have a different sort of difficult to, uh, job to do, particularly when there's that sort of focus on it. But there is now, I've put in place an independent maternity oversight panel led by uh, Mick Giannassi, who's a former chair of the Welsh Ambulance Service Trust and a former chief constable. And they're working together with families and staff to assist the health board to respond to the recommendations of the report to rebuild trust and confidence within the service and trust and confidence within the people that they serve. And there's not just important learning for that part of Wales to take, but actually for the whole country as well. Uh, that improvement action taking place in Kumta Morganic should cause everyone to look again at the way our services are being delivered to make sure that we reflect on what has taken place. And there was an opportunity to reflect on those findings in shaping and finalising the five-year vision for maternity services. Uh, and I'll receive the first report of the oversight panel in October to give me a clear review on the nature of the improvement that has already been achieved, as well as the next steps that need to be taken. But in recognising honestly the nature of the failings that have taken place, we also have to recognise that that is not representative of maternity services in every part of the country. Uh, far from it. In fact, over the last few years, we have had two Royal College Midwife UK Midwives of the Year from Wales, uh, and a number of other award winners in other categories. There's international recognition of what is happening in midwifery here in Wales. I know that in Canada they're particularly interested in the approach we're taking on a different approach to more births within communities and different choices to be made. And equally there's a World Health Organization collaborating centre on midwifery care based here in Cardiff. So we do have lots to positively offer as well as I think that open reflection that we're looking to learn where things have gone wrong. 
Uh, and I look forward to the high standards of care that are regularly achieved within Wales being more and more consistently high standards for each and every family. So I wanted to take action where we're not achieving the best outcomes. Uh, and that is more than just uh, the issues we've discussed. I know that for breastfeeding rates, for example, here in Wales, we are nowhere near where we'd like to be. The most recent quarterly statistics show that 60.9% of babies are breastfed at birth, which has only increased 3.3 percentage points in the last five years. Uh, and at 10 days old, fewer than half of all babies are still being breastfed. And again, slightly more than five years ago, but nothing like where we would like it to be. It's in, and for those of us to look at the evidence, it's not just right for mothers, but also for babies as well. And the challenge of actually improving those, uh, those breastfeeding rates uh, without wanting women to feel judged uh, if they can't or don't wish to. But there's a challenge about how we support people to make choices. So when I launched the Maternity Vision, I also published a five-year breastfeeding action plan. And in developing the plan, we worked with key stakeholders in Public Health Wales to take a broader look at the population that we're serving. That included an appraisal of Wales as a breastfeeding-friendly country through the Yale University Initiative, and again, listening to the experiences of mothers here in Wales. So our breastfeeding action plan has a clear structure to plan, initiate, and evaluate our services to support breastfeeding and to increase future uptake. So the structure enables clear accountability and reporting of improvements from health boards to the government and joined up planning with the voice of women, families and specialist clinicians at the centre. So we've been going through some challenging and changing times, as you may have noticed across the country, not just in health and social care. Um, there's an undeniable reality that Brexit will impact every single public service that we provide, as well as our economic future as well. Now, in Wales, we've been very clear that we want to do everything possible to prevent a no-deal Brexit. And at the same time, we're working with our partners to try and limit, as far as possible, the damaging effects that that might have, would have, on our national health service and wider social care system. It's not just issues about access to medicines but that are a UK government responsibility. We're also doing all that we can to seek assurance and provide assurance to people in Wales that we are genuine partners in trying to make sure that we have met adequate medicine supply where it's possible and we don't want people to stockpile medicines needlessly because they're worried about the future. We've also taken action to make sure that we have additional storage in Wales for additional supplies of medical equipment and other devices uh, that are essential items for hospitals and they're not disrupted. So we spent nearly £10 million on buying a warehouse in South East Wales to stock up more of those items. Um, I'm generally frustrated at the amount of time, energy, effort and money we're having to spend uh, on Brexit planning and the uncertainty that it's uh, delivering. In normal times, I would not have spent £10 million of NHS capital buying a warehouse. Uh, I can think of many other ways in which we could have used that money to deliver much better and bigger gain for our health services. But given that Brexit is a very real prospect, you can't not spend the money and not spend the time and the effort on planning for it. Uh, I know there are planners within the health service who are shifting more and more of their time and attention into this field again. That is time that is not being spent on making sure we deliver the very best possible health service now and in the future. So it's a real frustration for me. Uh, but we will have to carry on preparing for what still might happen at the end of Halloween, all the while, while I still have the view that our futures are better off within the Union of the United Kingdom and the Union of the European Union as well. Not just because technically it'll make it easier to transfer medicines across borders. Not just because we have so many of our staff in the National Health Service who come from across the European Union. Not just because it makes it easy for people to work, work where we recognise uh, our qualifications across borders as well. Not just for all of those Brits who live abroad and have their health and care taken care of because we're currently all citizens of the European Union. But it's more than that. It's an initiative that was born out of the Second World War and has drawn people together. No member of the European Union has gone to war with another member state in the lifetime of the European Union and their membership. And it's really not that long ago that conflict was regularly resolved in that way across Europe. The former Yugos Yugoslavian republics 
they went to war. There's still conflict between Russia and former USSR republics that is being resolved by people actively going and fighting. It's more than just an economic project. It's a social project. It's a recognition of our bloody history across this continent. And I think there is much, much more to fight for. And in talking about the three million European Union citizens who live within the United Kingdom, we've always been clear. There should never be bargaining chips in any negotiation. Uh, it should never simply be that we do very well out of European Union citizens who come to work here. Because most European Union citizens who come to the UK are working age adults. They pay taxes and they contribute to our services. Uh, and actually we export people to the European Union who are more likely to be retired or at the end of their working life. Now I don't criticise those people wanting a good life in the sunshine of southern Europe any more than I'm prepared to accept any form of criticism from European Union nationals who have chosen to give their working lives to this country. It's not just a transfer of labour and money. Those are people who are part of our communities. They're your neighbours, they're my children's friends, who he works, who he plays with and argues with and makes up with in the playground and in the parks uh, in the town in which we live. So it's about much more than just saying we only want people of working age to come here from the European Union. We get that already. It's about the sort of country that we are, the sort of country that we want to be. Uh, and I'm delighted that the government in Wales has the same view as the Royal College of Midwives, that we should offer people a further opportunity uh, to think and to decide again about our future within Europe. And the, and the view of the government here in Wales is that we should remain within the European Union. I know other views are available, but as the reality of the damage that it will cause is more and more obvious, I think we should have the opportunity to change our minds. Politicians often say, give me credit for the fact that I've listened to the evidence and changed my mind. I think the public deserve that opportunity too. So Wales, a country proud of our history and proud of our future. Proud of our relationships within these islands and beyond within Europe and the wider world. I look forward to more progress in maternity services. Learning from where things have gone wrong, sharing where we have real excellence, not just within Wales, but across the wider maternity family across the globe. We'll continue to invest in the future of our service and continue to listen to people who rely on this service. And I'll continue to be proud of the work that our midwives here in Wales do. I know you're going to hear more from Karen Jewell, the nursing officer of maternity in her early years in the Welsh Government, to give her a full title. She is actually a proper midwife as well. Um, uh, she, uh, she's won awards as well. Um, she doesn't like talking about it, so we talk about it on her, but she's smiling and looking rather embarrassed at the back. Uh, but I think we have lots to offer and lots to share. And I look forward to us also being a listening country, listening to what happens in the rest of the UK and beyond, to understand where excellence exists elsewhere and to want to say, how do we do that here in Wales and can we do it better? Can we make an even bigger difference for our families, an even bigger difference uh, for the service that we all rely upon at some point in our lives? Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to working with you.